Welcome back to The Marvelous Old World. My name is Matthew Smith. We are going to continue our exploration into the history of Port Townsend, Washington. If you haven't already, I encourage you to go and check out the first part of this series. And I'd also like to take a moment to humbly ask for your support. If this research is of value to you, I just opened up my Patreon account. Uh, I'll put the link in the show notes below. And without further ado, we're going to dive right back in. Here we have the Port Townsend Historic City Hall Building. This building housed city offices, the municipal courtroom, city council chambers, the fire hall, fireman's quarter, and a still intact dungeon-like basement housing the city jail. It is the oldest continuously operating city hall building in the state of Washington. And according to Atlas Obscura, actual civic use of the building ceased years ago, leaving this gorgeous building to serve as a museum for the local Jefferson County Historical Society. There is one exception. The city council meetings still happen in the council chambers as they have since 1892. But this is where we begin to get into our mystery history. According to the Pacific Coast Architectural Database, construction began in 1891 and finished in February of 1892. One year. One year to design and build this incredible architectural masterpiece. Now I ask you, does this look like a building that took only one year to build? The history gets even stranger when we consider that architects Batwell and Patrick designed Port Townsend City Hall, an, an eclectic building with some neoclassical Romanesque and Queen Anne style motifs, but virtually no information exists on the Batwell and Patrick firm, which seems to have lasted only one or two years between the years 1890 and 1891. So here again, we run into the case of the Phantom Architects, where architecture firms are just conjured up or they just appear and then as quickly disappear without any trace of who they were, where they were from. Does this make any sense at all? That we are unable to account for the architects that built the masterworks of the past. Here's a view of the local fire department, dated July 4th, 1892, ostensibly when this building had been completed for only six months. Here we have another view. This photograph is dated 1890, even though the completion of the building was supposedly in 1892. Now this looks like it's been around for a while. So even if this was dated, correctly when the building was first in use I look at this photograph and I see an aged building I see a building that's been here for quite some time now this is how the building looked in 1960 you can see it's been through a really hard time much like the Coon building it appears to have lost its top somewhere along the way and in 1969 there was an effort to that began to restore the building. And here's an artist's rendering of what this building would hopefully look like someday after restoration. And by the way, restoration was completed in 2006. And this is how the building looks today. Lovingly restored with what was remaining of it with the addition of a new facility for the city hall functions and notably what appeared in that artist's rendering as a civic park became a parking lot, which I find to be very telling because you can see how the, the mindset changed in the last 60 years or so. Now here we ha have cars coming and going, whereas the public space is kept civic. It's a pedestrian promenade with a park that would have been a civic space. But instead, as things happen, 
the automobile took over and this is what we this is what we get now what's curious about this building is the windows that go below the grade of the sidewalk now of course you don't have to be an architect to know that this is not how you would design basement windows sure like they said there's the the city jail is down here so you want to have light and air coming in and it's possible that of course the sidewalk was raised over the years but it does make you wonder especially in light of what we discovered with the Fowler building how they have an entire window below street grade there's your windowsill rotten away with the elements in this very rainy climate now this is the placard across the street from the city hall that gives us a little bit of clue into what happened to the top. Now this says, in 1945, a violent windstorm severely damaged the building's towers and third floor roof structure. The city failed to fund repairs and somehow they had the funding to remove not just the towers, but the entire gable roof system. And as I was looking through this, studying it closely, something really jumped out at me. And I'll show you. What we have here, what we see, is a streetcar. Did Port Townsend have a trolley system? Or was this just an artist's rendering? I did a little, a little bit of exploration into this. And lo and behold, here is the Port Townsend Electric Railway Company. So sure enough, at this early stage in 1890, 1892, Port Townsend boasted an electric street trolley system. Now, if you've watched my previous vid videos on Seattle's old world history, I did a deep dive into the infrastructure of our electric trolley systems of old. And what we found out is that it takes an awful lot of very sophisticated infrastructure, much of which is built below the street grade. If it's a cable car system, it has to include uh, massive pulleys that are buried in below street grade. It also has to have a powerhouse somewhere generating enough electricity to pull this sucker along. So even if this only lasted for a little while, <clears throat> which by the accounts that I've read, it appears to have only lasted for a short time, the infrastructure had to be built in its entirety for it to have worked at all for any amount of time. Now getting into the below grade goings on, I found this photograph on Stolen History's article on Port Townsend. And wouldn't you know it, a below grade arch. And here we have street lights, or sidewalk lights as they're called. These leaded glass prisms that we see all over Seattle's Pioneer Square District, bringing natural light below the level of the sidewalk. Now why would Port Townsend have these going on? Well look at this, Port Townsend has an underground. Who knew? Now you can enter their underground by way of the stairway and there's shops down there. And here we are. These are storefronts. One, two, three, four entrances this brick archway, a steel structure of more modern times. Perhaps this was rebuilt at some point and a stone retaining wall. Now, as we saw in the Seattle case, this stone retaining wall would be holding up the street grade above. And so what we discover is that at some point in time, at least this portion of Port Townsend downtown was down at this level and had been built up. And you have to ask yourself why. And I ask myself, where are the records for this? Where's the accounting of this? Now, just to contextualize this a little bit further, I looked on Google Maps to find the entrance to the underground. And it's right here, right adjacent to the Baker Block, which we saw before. And we saw that construction photograph of the Baker Block that was not the Baker Block, but was down the street. Now, here we are, looking at the actual Baker Block. Here's our entrance to the underground. 
And now when we see this, we have to imagine that at some point during the life of this building, Port Townsend Street level on this side, in any case, would have been one story lower. Now, if we look at the aerial view, here's the Mount Baker block with the underground uh, entrance right here and this little jaunt a few blocks over to our city hall. And so when I see this and kind of put two and two together, what I'm realizing is that this portion of downtown at one point seems to have had to have been built up. And I just so happened to come across a geologist online and I would like to share this with you. Now this fellow, Better Geology, looked closely at the landscape of Port Townsend and this is what he had to say about the downtown. Here in downtown Port Townsend, the historic downtown area is built on artificial fill. So when this port city was growing and expanding in the late 1800s, the marshlands and beaches were simply filled out into the ocean to create room for the bustling port city. Now did you catch that? What this fellow just said, a real geologist, was that downtown was built on artificial fill. So not only did our enterprising pioneers build all of this in record time, they also went through the trouble of filling this portion of downtown with sediments that they removed from somewhere else. Now we can go back and look at the photographs of this very strip, Water Street, in 1890 that we saw earlier and plug in this information. This is fill. This was built up in order to level out downtown and have a continuation of the street at a consistent level. So then we have to begin to conclude when putting all of this together, the Mount Baker block with its access to the underground portion of the city, the Fowler building, which we discussed earlier, which is now the headquarters of the Port Townsend Leader, the local newspaper, and, it, and its basement window, which is fully submerged, and the old City Hall building, which is right here, and its below grade windows, at sidewalk going below sidewalk level, we have to begin to understand that this entire historic district of Port Townsend was at one time at a lower grade entirely. And we have to ask ourselves if it is possible in the two to three year time frame that we're, we've been given that not only were all of these buildings built, but also that they had the means and the wherewithal to cut all of that material from one section of the city and cart it, level it, compact it, all of that fill to create the level ground that we now have today. And the picture that starts to emerge for me is that this Victorian town was built at a much earlier time frame, at a lower level, and that at some point this area was filled in and a new street grade was established. But it's impossible from looking at this through the lens of an architect and a builder it's impossible that all of this was done between the years 1889 and 1892, especially when we see a completed city in 1890 from the photographs that we've looked at already. So how old is Port Townsend? It certainly doesn't seem to match up with the time frame that we've been given by our history books.